Hey guys, so for those of you who have been following this channel, you may have heard on a previous video that for the first six months of 2017, I am going to be using a new desktop environment, one which I am not really that familiar with, the GNOME desktop environment. Now, I used GNOME 2 as a daily driving desktop environment before, but that's really much more like the Mate desktop than it is the GNOME 3 desktop that we all know today. So I thought that I might take the first six months of 2017 to really get to grips with the GNOME desktop and see what you know how I would feel about a really quite a new style of uh, of desktop design being used as my daily driver. Um, I'm still going to be using the Manjaro distribution because well very simply because I've had so few problems with it as a distribution. It's really quite a good distribution and it's well maintained and the you know it's got a helpful community. It's got good documentation. It's got lots and lots and lots of software as available as uh, as, as well as uh, access to the AUR which is available. So. Um, there's a lot going for the Manjaro distribution. I've talked about it before on this channel. Um, but I decided to take that distribution, put uh, GNOME on top of it, and rather than use the community respin of Manjaro, I decided just to install GNOME on top of a standard Manjaro uh, installation and then remove the standard XFCE desktop environment. The reason I did that was because the GNOME community edition Manjaro distribution um, actually comes with Wayland uh, activated as standard uh, and since I run a NVIDIA graphics card I cannot run Wayland which is a little bit of a problem for now I'm sure the support will come in due course so I just yeah I just decided to run a regular vanilla instance of GNOME without any of the I think the only third party extensions I'm running are just a few things I've tweaked in the GNOME tweak uh, you know in the GNOME tweak settings I've added in the minimize and maximize bars and things like that but I've decided not to use really any third party um, plugins for the GNOME desktop at this early stage right now because I want to get used to like the pure GNOME desktop. So how, you know, I'm a week in and, and how have I got on? Fine, basically. Fine is the word. Like it's, to me, it's a, it's a middling desktop environment. It's perfectly good. It does the job. Um, it looks nice. It themes well. Um, and it's, it does things a little differently, but it's, it's very intuitive at that. Um, I like having the, uh, the the dashboard and all my windows at a, at a glance. I don't have to guess from the title of the window down in a, in a taskbar. I get to see the visual representation of my windows. And I think that's really, you know, I think that, that really is intuitive and helpful. So um, I've got to say, whereas I am optimistic, the thing that pulls me back from GNOME every single time, and it's going to be the reason that I'm not going to be able to use GNOME beyond the six months that I'm just trialing it out for, and is that it's just... Uh, too heavy on system resources. And I know system resources isn't something that everyone is super concerned about, but for me, if I'm just running a desktop environment that takes longer to load than it really needs to, um, that isn't just as snappy as I like it to be, then um, it's it's always going to not be my ideal desktop environment. I like something that is just so incredibly responsive. You know, we're, we're looking at XFCE, LXDE. It doesn't need to look that good, but it needs to, you know, it needs to look presentable. If someone's looking over my shoulder, looking at my, my Linux desktop, I still feel like I, I've got to sell the Linux desktop a little bit wherever I go. So I always f try and make my desktop look as nice as possible to put the best possible face on for uh, for, for, for Linux desktop in general. Um, but looks aren't necessarily massively important. Compositing isn't important. Um, and I've not had problems with screen tearing for, for quite a long time, which I think is down to the help of the NVIDIA drivers. I know that screen tearing is a, is a, is a, is a sort of, you know, it's an issue that affects a lot of people, but I, I don't know, I just guess I've been fortunate enough that, you know, I've got the, the, the hardware that doesn't really cause screen tearing very much at all. In fact, if, if any, you know, I don't notice it. So, uh, um, and I don't, I don't really get it. So, um, Anyway, I digress and I'm rambling on a little bit. So I'm going to wrap up the video here now, but I've got to say for the first week of using GNOME plus a couple of days as I was installing it in, and, you know, running up to 2017, uh, generally, generally quite happy. I'm, it's meeting my expectations, I think is the best way to put it. Um, do any of you guys use GNOME, um, you know, as your daily driver? Let me know how you get on with it down the comments below but also let me know if there are any tips and tricks and interesting stuff like that that would make my daily experience with GNOME any better. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.